well, I'm Themis Claritus, and I've, um, I, am, I believe I'm the most qualified person to win the general election against Dick Blumenthal. I've been in the legislature uh, for 11 terms. I've won 11 elections. Nobody else in the primary has ever won an election. One of them has run several times and has lost. The other one couldn't even get a nomination for a state senate seat uh, in her own town. You know, and the reason why that's important is because a legislature is a difficult place to maneuver. And this is just a bigger legislature down in Washington. And it's really important to have somebody that knows what they're doing and doesn't need a lot of on-the-job training. But, you know, just as importantly, I have fought for many years for Republican, common-sense, conservative policies. In 2017, as you know, when the legislature was almost tied in the House and the Senate, we passed the first minority party budget in the United States of America with um, common sense Republican principles like bonding caps and spending caps, you know, conservative ideas on how to make sure the state of Connecticut is in a better fiscal place. Um, and that's why our, our, um, our rainy day fund is so flush right now. So I always tell the governor, uh, whenever he mentions that, that he should thank a Republican whenever he says that. Um, people sort of act like Dick Blumenthal is unbeatable. What are his weaknesses? Well, it, they act like that, but the polls say a different thing. Uh, first of all, his, his favorability is the lowest it's ever been since he's been in, in the U.S. Senate, almost underwater. A uh, number that came out yesterday, which was very interesting, was that even though we know he's probably the most well-known politician in Connecticut, 47% of the people said they're going to vote for someone else. That is a very scary number for an incumbent. And that's a number that probably will not change, because if they know they just don't want to vote for you, that's not saying they like somebody better. That's saying they just don't like you enough. That's almost 50% of the people. It also had, um, you know, a, a previous poll a month or two ago had me beating uh, Senator Blumenthal head-to-head -head with unaffiliated voters for about five points. And that's so important because, as we know, of all the registered voters in Connecticut, almost 50% are unaffiliated. Um, so Republican voters have a pretty clear choice on Tuesday between you and the other two. Um, I agree. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I mean, like, you, I mean, I mean, what is that choice? I mean, beyond, I mean, just beyond experience, just position-wise, mm -hmm. you know, they, you know, they are far to the right of you. All right. We certainly disagree on, on certain issues. There's no question about it. But as I like to say to people all the time, you know, I have been a Republican my entire life. I was the House Republican leader, the first and only woman to hold that role for the past six years. I was vice chairman of the party. I believe in Republican principles of lower taxes, of smaller government, of allowing people to take control of their own lives. I believe in strong borders, you know. The number one killer of 18 to 45 year olds in this country are fentanyl overdoses and 90% of it is coming through that border. You know, I support the police. My first endorsement was the Connecticut State Police and then the Fraternal Order of Police. I support people um, who keep us safe. You know, so I think the choice is who do you think has the best chance to beat Dick Blumenthal? That is the only choice next Tuesday in the primary. Are we all going to agree on everything? Absolutely not, and we never will. You know, I can promise you we're all never going to agree on everything, but we're going to agree on way more than we disagree on, and I am a proven fighter, a proven winner, and I'm the only one who can beat Dick Blumenthal. But do you think the Republican Party has moved to the right of where you are? You know, I've actually been asked that question before, and I don't, you know, I think maybe it has a little bit, you know, na nationally. I think Connecticut Republicans and Northeastern Republicans are different. I think we're very fiscally conservative. And again, I've proven that uh, in my career in making Connecticut, you know, a better place, even being in the minority. I think socially, you know, we have differing of opinions. But again, this is about knowing we agree on way more than we disagree on. Mm. Um, is this a litmus test about where the Republican Party is headed in this state? I think it's hard to say that one election is a litmus test. I think it's important um, that people understand that after 40 years of Dick Blumenthal in office, uh, he doesn't represent Connecticut anymore. He represents Joe Biden um, and the extreme left. And I don't think the extreme left represents Connecticut or this country. Um, you, know, I, you know, obviously everyone's going to be playing to the, the sizable number of unaffiliated voters in this state. Um, are you worried that some of them are just going to be playing a numbers game and saying, look, I, I like them as Claritas, I actually agree with their a lot of stuff, I just don't want the Republicans to be in charge and the Senate is so close right now? Well, there's certainly people who will have that, that feeling, but I, I hope and I plan on by the time November 8th comes that the difference between Themis Claritas and Dick Blumenthal 
in regards to who you want your senator to be, who you want to represent you and not Joe Biden. People in Connecticut do not want Joe Biden to be our U.S. Senator. They want the person that represents them. And what I know is this. People in Connecticut know that canceling of um, pipelines, that canceling of oil and gas leases, that not being tough on our borders so our family and friends are dying from fentanyl, that, that not supporting our police who have kept us safe and now, live, now we have to live in less safe neighborhoods. That's what people in Connecticut care about. And if you care about that, you cannot vote for Dick Blumenthal. Because when I go to Washington, I'm going to be the same person I was in the legislature in Connecticut. I will vote for and support things that are best for Connecticut, not who the leader is and not the radical right or the radical left. I will support Connecticut. And I have a proven record of doing that. I don't just say it. So let me ask you one, one last thing, because I, I think abortion is another issue that is pretty important to a lot of people in this state. Maybe it's not a deciding factor. The economy probably is. But I, I, think, it, I think it's probably up there after all. Um, how do you assure moderates who are worried about abortion access that a vote for Republican Themis Claritus is going to protect their abortion rights? All they have to do is look at my record. I've been public about uh, being pro-choice, pro but I believe in res personal responsibility. I don't support late-term abortion unless it's the life or the health of the mother. But how do you stop Mitch McConnell from going ahead with a national abortion ban? Well, I don't vote for it. You know, I don't vote for it. Nobody passes anything unless people are voting for it. You have to get enough votes to vote for it. And I would never support uh, a national abortion ban. I wouldn't. I don't. I believe in women's right to choose, but I believe in personal responsibility, and I believe in parameters on that right. I don't believe in the California laws that say you can get an abortion after a, a child is born. I mean, I think a lot of these things are have gone way over the line. You know, I think in a, I believe in a reasonable uh, abortion law, and I certainly would not vote for a national abortion ban. I never would. I mean, and, and you, you know, I have fought Dan Malloy, I have fought Ned Lamont, you know, and I will fight Dick Blumenthal when I get to Washington. I certainly believe in general Republican principles of lower taxes and smaller government, you know, and keeping us safe. But I have never been, and I never will be, just one straight vote for one side or the other. I will vote for Connecticut and what the needs for Connecticut are. All right, uh, real quick, uh, <laughs> um, Brian mentioned to me that uh, you're even having to spend your birthday doing some calls and fundraising, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's no nonstop, right? It never ends. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, th this is gonna, I mean, you know, this is gonna be an expensive race. Dick Blumenthal has a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, how do you counteract that? Well, I've been really proud to have out outraised my two opponents in the primary two to one uh, since we've been in in the last two quarters. And I know the National Republican Sen Senatorial Committee is very interested in this race. They're putting Connecticut on the radar for the first time in a long time. And this isn't about uh, matching Dick Blumenthal dollar for dollar. It's about getting out, make, uh, raising enough money to get the message out. And I can assure you that once the primary comes and goes um, and I win it, it will be very very interesting to people around this country, including um, that committee and people who believe in common sense Republican leadership. Okay, that's all I got. Anything you want to throw in? Nope.